The Class 43 HST, one of the world's most iconic trains. But even the most iconic ones still need to pop into crew works every now and again for a bit of routine maintenance. Ok so we'll take a look at the powered unit first um, and have a look at how we can make sure she's in tip top condition. Um, the main consideration is the wheels but we do also need to make sure that she's lubricated throughout. Now this particular kind of model, the newer version of the HST, uses a, a flywheel mechanism inside to drive both bogies. So if we take the lid off and have a look inside we'll see how we can just lubricate that, uh, that mechanism. Now to get inside these models there are four screws hidden just underneath the corners of the bogies here. So two that side, two that side that need removing. So a flathead screwdriver just lift those out. With those four screws removed, the body then comes away quite easily. But with these models you need to be very careful. Firstly, because the lights at the front are connected through some little contact pads that if you just pull it up, um, it'll jar the mechanism. And the cab lighting is powered through some uh, fine wires that connect down to the bottom half. So if you just pull it away with too much force, you could end up snapping everything. So you very carefully lift up at the back, then push it and slide it ever so slightly forward and then the whole thing should slip away. You can't pull it too far because there isn't an awful lot of slack in those wires for the cab. But with it open there you can see those contact pads I was talking about and how you need to be careful with those little metal clips. With us in the side you can see obviously the large circuit board on the top with the space for the DCC uh, chip if you wanted to fit that there but just underneath is the main motor in the middle with one of these flywheels on either side and then that stretches off via an axle here to a ball joint just underneath this cover. Now there would be no need to remove this to actually perform the service but so that you can see it a little bit more clearly on the camera I'm just going to undo those two screws there and take that plastic section out so that you can now see underneath this mechanism where the axle joins the actual bogey at the back so that rotates that way and then the joint inside converts that motion um, into the opposite direction so that it can then turn those wheels at the bottom. This section here where the ball joint allows the bogey to turn while also rotating does need a little bit of lubrication. So I'm going to use our Gauge Master oil pen just to be able to add a few drops of oil around that joint and then I'm just manually going to turn that flywheel just so that oil gets distributed fairly evenly and I said there isn't actually any need to remove the cover in order to do that because you can actually reach the joints from either end, so I'm just going to do the front end in exactly the same way underneath that circuit board. Besides checking then that there's no dust or debris or anything that's been picked up on the inside, there isn't really a lot else we can do on the inside of this particular model. So I'm going to fit the body back into place carefully doing it in reverse, so dropping the front end a little bit further back, slotting it up into position and then sliding it gently forward 
so that it makes contact with those pads at the front and then the back drops into place. All I need to do, need to do now is reattach those screws and then we can have a look at the wheels. Okay, with the body reattached, we now need to turn our attention to cleaning the wheels. So the first thing that I want to do is apply a little bit of track cleaning fluid using a cotton wool bud so that it cleans off a lot of the grime um, and um, residue that's built upon the wheels. Normally, that's a little bit tricky with something like this because you'd have to apply it to the bit that you can see, then apply a little bit of power to turn the wheels a little bit, then apply a bit more and so on and so forth. But because of this central drive shaft that's actually attached to both bogies at the same time, it makes this job a little bit easier with these models. So what I'm going to do first of all is apply my track cleaning fluid to my cotton wool bud. And then we've got our Pico track cleaning um, accessory here attached up to the rolling road that's attached up to a DC power supply at the side of me here. And I can touch one to one side, the other to the other side, and that will start the, motor, the wheels turning. But because I'm, even though I'm applying the power at this end, that central drive shaft means that the wheels at this end turn. So, with those moving, I can press my cotton wool bud against the wheel and just let it rub as it turns. And there you can see the residue that's actually built up on those wheels coming off onto the cotton wool bud there. So I'll repeat that with all the wheels on this bogey and then swap hands and do it with the other wheels at the back. The other thing that I need to be conscious of is the pickup mechanisms and how it's getting electricity from those wheels into the motor. Now in this model, it's hard to see on camera, but there are the usual copper strips behind each wheel and making contact with this inner rim. Now that means that because that's an electrical contact surface, it's also likely to build up residue um, through electrical sparks and things like that, leaving a little bit of residue behind. So it's important to also clean behind the wheel to allow the, uh, the pickup to make the best possible contact. So I do that in exactly the same way. A little bit of track cleaning fluid onto a cotton wool bud. Use my tool to make contact on one side and get those wheels turning. But rather than placing it on the top surface that normally touches the rail, I'm going to push outwards from behind. And again, let the power turn the wheel to rub against the cotton wool bud. Again, you can see that there is some grime and dirt behind those wheels. Okay, so I've now used those cotton wool buds and the track cleaning fluid to clean off the residue on all of the contact surfaces of all of those wheels. The only downside to using cotton wool buds is that you can occasionally get little fibres that then obviously come off and get stuck behind the wheel. It's a bit of a trade-off because obviously they're perfect at soaking up the track cleaning fluid and they're good at being able to um, have a slight abrasive action that, that removes that residue. So all you need to do afterwards is just have a good check visually behind each wheel and if you can see a fibre, if you can see just a stray bit of cotton, just a pair of tweezers, pluck it out of the way and clean that up. And if the tweezers can't quite get to where you can see it, a screwdriver can usually flick it out of the way. The last phase now, I'm just going to use the Pico track cleaning tool again, but this time I'm going to turn the power up a little bit higher on the controller so those wheels can spin a little bit faster, and I'm going to use the slight abrasive action of the pad there to remove any final little abrasions 
and give it a really good polish at the end. So as usual, holding the sort of claw side to one of the wheels and then touching the other will make the wheels turn and a slight rubbing motion as those wheels turn underneath will help those strands get into all the little crevices and get into the corner of those wheels. And there we have it. Some nicely clean and polished wheels that should make for good electrical pickup and make sure the locomotive runs smoothly. The last phase is then to apply a little bit more oil to the actual axles of each of the four wheel uh, of each of the four sets of wheels um, just behind each one. So using the gauge master oil pen again, I can get right in to the axle and just a drop of oil there and there. Same on that side. It is only a tiny drop that's needed and that will then spread itself around when the wheels turn. So I'll make that happen one more time just to let that oil distribute and that motor unit is good to go. Okay, so swapping to the other end, and this is the dummy unit now, so it's a lot lighter because there's no motor inside, but the servicing operation is very, very similar. There's no real need to actually remove the body this time because there's no drive mechanism inside with any moving parts that need oiling, but we do need to turn our attention st uh, still to the wheels because in these dummy units, they pick up electricity in order to power the lights. So, with each of the wheels, it's the same operation. Using a little bit of track cleaning fluid on a cotton wool bud. So that's it, all the wheels cleaned, all the pickups nice and um, residue free. Now I just need to oil some of these wheels at the back. Again, she's obviously not a, uh, um, the drive unit so there's very few moving parts but if we can make sure that these wheels turn as smoothly as possible it'll help obviously the motion of the whole train. So with these ones they're not actually connected and held in in the middle they simply plug in either side of the plastic frame of the bogey there. So I'm going to drop a little touch of oil on the outside this time of each wheel where it joins the bogey. like so, and then again just to distribute the oil, give each wheel a bit of a turn. And that should do her quite nicely. So. Now I just need to turn my attention to the other HSTs in the fleet and we'll be, able to get, be ready to give them a good running.